There is another fire that has broken out for the second time this summer at the Islamic Center of Joplin. A mosque in Joplin, Missouri burned to the ground yesterday. And get this, it's the second suspicious fire in just over a month. Fire unfortunately does have a long history here at the Islamic Mosque. In September of 2008, a sign was set on fire and that was ruled arson as well as a fire earlier this year to the roof of the building. Here's what the Islamic Society of Joplin looked like on Sunday. And here's what it looks like now. There had been uh, no arrests made in connection with either one of those fires. of this event called Neighbors. Um, Neighbors is all about people coming together from all different beliefs and acknowledging that we deserve to overcome hatred with love. Um, it all started whenever I saw on Facebook that um, the mosque had been burnt down and I was incredibly, incredibly sad about it. And so I just decided, what, what can we do about it? And um, like I've told everyone here, my motivation behind this is because of my love for Jesus. And he teaches his followers to love our neighbors and to love our enemies. And so that's two things for me. That is loving our neighbors, those in the Islamic society, and also loving our enemies, which would be the person who, if this was arson, burnt it down. And so when I've been planning this, all I've been thinking about is we want them to know that we love them. And so that's what tonight has been about. Um, people all over um, Joplin, but also people all over the world um, coming together and saying we are going to make things beautiful from things that aren't. Um, I would take my daughter to the mosque typically like for celebrations or for um, or for like Ramzan activities and things like that. And she asked me one Saturday, are we going to the masjid? If we take a nap, will we go to the masjid when, it, when the sun goes down? And I said, we can't go to the masjid because it's burned down. She's four. She said, how did it burn? And I said, well, there's people in this world that don't quite understand how that affects us as a community. And I didn't really have any words to tell her how it burned. But she was more of the adult than I was in this situation. And she said to me, it's okay, Mama. Alamia will give us more. My Muslim brothers and sisters, though many of us here may not share your faith, we mourn with you tonight and we celebrate in solidarity with you the, the things that we have in common. Um, first heard you know obviously Ramadan was going on and you know I think almost everyone was up for suhoor 
And uh, my husband actually uh, woke me up and took me outside the room because our kids were asleep with us. And I instantly knew that something was wrong if he had to take me away and tell me. Having the mask was a center for most of the people that are here right now. They attracted, the mask attracted them to this area. Everybody came here before they joined the hospital or job. They checked on it to make sure they have a mask. And I was again feeling so good that I can tell them, they says, yes, we do have a mask and it's a beautiful mask. And then telling them that we have a Sunday school that their kids could be educated and, you know, um, teach Quran. We have good community, good volunteer teachers, good imam that is very helpful to teach all of us. And everything was going so good. And um, all of a sudden this tragedy happened. Um, and the tragedy was such that I couldn't even believe that it could be anybody from Joplin or local area because the people here are amazingly so friendly. When we had the masjid uh, established to my office, people will send me cards to congratulate me, say how happy they were that they had their doctor had a worship place. Hi, my name is Carol Hamad, and I'm a member um, of the Islamic Society of Joplin with my family, uh, my husband Ali, and my two daughters, Elise and Sonia. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about what the mosque meant to us. Um, living in a rural community with few Muslim families, um, it was a real meeting place for us. Um, it was a place for our children to play. It was a place for our children to have uh, dinners with other Muslim children. Um, so the loss of that building has, has been a big loss in our life, um, one that I'm sure will be replaced eventually. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> And the most unfortunate event I found was the tornado which hit us last year. And that day was the happiest day for us. We were celebrating graduation on May 22nd at Joplin Masjid. And there was a graduation of high school also same day. After we came out of the high school graduation, we were victims of the tornado. We were crying with the Joplin residents. We took care of them. We did volunteerism for them. Many of our community members lost their houses. They got injured, lost their cars. But thank God we came together. And that's when I thought that any tragic or bad event that happens to us, whether it's the tornado or the burning of the mosque, we always have to consider it as a sadqa. Maybe, maybe there was another plan for us. Maybe it was a blessing in disguise. We don't know. But all I know is that something good, inshallah, will come out of that. And it may be a better or a newer or a state-of-the-art mosque that will bring a whole lot of community together again in Joplin. Not sure, but only time will tell. But in the meantime, I know that our community, our congregation, 
our Joplin community, they've all stood by our side and they're there for us. And that's all we can ask for and pray for at the time. My name is Kimberly Kester. I'm a member of the Islamic Society of Joplin. I'm also a spokesperson for them. I've been um, active at the mosque here for three years, and I'm also a professor at Missouri Southern State University. I was asked by the executive committee to kind of take charge of fundraising and help them out. I really had never had any experience with this before, but a man contacted me named Shahid Amunala, and he said, I want to help you. I've done this for many people, for many organizations, and I want to just let you have the benefit of my expertise. And he guided me through setting up the Indiegogo fundraising website, and we discussed what were we going to ask for, what was our goal. Um, at the website, you have to put in a goal. We discussed it, we said, $250,000. At the time, of course, and even now, we don't know how much it's going to cost to rebuild the mosque. We don't have plans. We haven't made final decisions. But we decided on a number that we felt was attainable and something reasonable that people could wrap their head around. So $250,000, we said we want to raise this amount by the end of Ramadan, by Eid. And we had no idea the, the response we were going to get from all over the world. I believe that there are donations from 23 different countries, many, many states in the United States, many, many cities, um, many different denominations, everyone donating. And when we reached our goal in 48 hours, we were amazed. Thank God, thank you to everyone who helped us do that. Um, many other organizations have come to us and, and helped us. The Islamic Circle of North America, ICNA, has donated 500 backpacks with school supplies for the school children, and we've been handing them out here at the neighbors' rally. So the mosque um, played a big role in our life. It wasn't just a place of worship. It was a place where we meet with our family and friends. Uh, I used to uh, teach there at the Sunday school, teach uh, the Arabic as a second language. We used to have fun. and. We have to have gatherings and uh, kids would do uh, special things. Uh, we have a dinner every month, so all these good things we will miss. Tonight is just about um, being a community and getting together and loving your neighbor and just um, spreading love and showing that no matter what happens in your community it's not about the bad it's about making something positive out of something bad and making something beautiful out of something that isn't yeah joplin is all about love and last semester i actually visited the mosque and they were just so hospitable and they opened up and they they fed me awesome food and just were so kind to me and they told me about their lives and I was able to tell them about my life and just we shared lives and lived in community even before this happened and so I'm so glad that even after this terrible thing has happened that we're able to still come together in community and still show God's love and just share that common aspect of our lives and just we want to show that Joplin is all about love. I'm and, I'm and I am the Imam at the Islamic Center of Joplin. And uh, I came here in Ramadan 2008. And this Ramadan 2012, a tragedy happened to our masjid here in Joplin. On August 6, the masjid, were, the masjid was burned down. And uh, my children, especially the four and five years, keep asking me to come to see the masjid. But after one week, I took them to the masjid, and they saw the masjid was destroyed, and the voice all says that I want to build a new masjid. 
So I just assure him that inshallah we will be the new masjid inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hamza and um the thing that shocked me was that the mosque burned um like one month after the first attempt of burning the mosque. So what made me sad the most was that was the only place I could go and meet my friends and hang out over there and that we couldn't pray our um daily prayers which are really important to us. Inshallah we'll get a better mosque and it really it really uh, set in motion um a vast uh, response uh, of uh, human caring and, and support that uh, I've not experienced uh, personally. Uh, this was uh, equally what we saw when uh, there was a, a tragic event of a tornado happened a year ago when everybody came together uh, with a unified voice uh, and that's exactly what we saw uh, when this mosque uh, uh, burned down um, the the love and uh, an outpouring of humanity that i saw is very inspirational um, your colleagues uh, co-workers um, neighbors friends um, and, and joplin as a whole uh, not to forget uh, the response from entire uh, united states and, and abroad um, has been phenomenal uh, people here especially did not um, uh, came as uh, a silent spectator. They they were they voiced their concerns and they, they voiced their support, um, and uh, that that really provides you an encouragement uh, and inspiration. The one thing I would like to mention is that I consider this incident because everything happens with the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, this incident in my opinion, is a blessing in disguise because it has given us a chance to do dawa. And because of that, there is more awareness of Islam and Muslims in Joplin and not here, but in surrounding areas. And we have been able to tell uh, other uh, religious faiths what Muslim and Islam is all about. We were able to attend their gatherings and we invited them for our Eid lunch and Eid prayers. And we were able to tell them what is right and what is wrong. So Alhamdulillah, it has uh, given us this opportunity to tell more about what Islam is and to uh, allay their fears about Muslims and Islam. And hopefully this Dawa will continue, inshallah, with more force. Once we have our masjid, we will do more interfaith meetings and uh, spread the true message of Islam, inshallah. I was in Egypt when I heard about that the mosque was burned down, and um, I felt really sad. And one of my daughters, her name is Layla, she started crying, and she didn't know where she was she would be going to to attend Islamic school. Uh, we used to hold uh, each Sunday a weekend or Islamic school at the mosque, and a lot of kids would attend, and they had a very good experience the last three or four years with the help of the imam and other volunteer teachers at the, at the masjid. And inshallah, after we, we build the new mosque, will reestablish uh, the Islamic school. I was on my Facebook, like I do every morning, and I saw the postings for the destruction of the mosque. I saw it on Sister Hina's uh, Facebook page, and you know, because of her Facebook page and because of her postings, I saw what you know the news didn't show up in Jeff City. So, because I'm also with the Catholic Charities and I'm the Vice Chair of the Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster, I immediately notified our faith-based disaster response network here in Missouri. And, uh, you know, the idea here is that nobody has the right to take away someone else's right to practice their faith and to be a part of their community and, you know, to be free. And as Sister Hina had said tonight, you know, we all came to America so that we can be free, so that we can practice and that, you know, we can 
you know, we can share that love that we have for our community and that's exactly why I'm here today. When it happens to you, you're just, you know, you think you'll react a certain way, but it's just shock. Um, one of my husband's partners called us to tell him Dr. Wakas Chishti and he was crying when he told us. So, you know, you, it's just, it's just the silence you sit in and you think about what to do next. SubhanAllah, we were very uh, lucky when the tornado hit the whole congregation, a lot of it, we were actually at the masjid. Um, I remember a couple of days ago, the board had talked about changing the date to another day. And then, subhanAllah, you know, we, we uh, decided that we wouldn't because our kids would, would have to learn that, you know, you can't take your Muslim identity for granted. And alhamdulillah, maybe Allah meant to protect us in that way. And when the tornado hit, we were all there. It was Asr time. Um, you know, the obvious uh, connection with Surat Al-Asr, you know, it, it still gives me chills. Uh, people had just gone in. We were, you know, a lot of us were in sujood and the, the sirens went off. Um, I had actually gone to school um, in Oklahoma State, so I knew that when the sirens go off, it's serious. So I remember telling a lot of our lady friends that, you know, let's get our kids, let's get in one room. Um, but still looking back, we thought we were prepared, but subhanAllah, if it, if it had hit us that day, you know, only Allah can protect you, you know, so Alhamdulillah, the lights flickered out for a bit and then they came back on. So it was as if, you know, we were herded in like sheep for Asr and Allah chose to protect us. And, you know, we all realized that because we, we lived through that and, you know, we just lost material things like homes, um, some of us. I remember the Imam's wife telling another friend of mine, Sahar, they both lost their homes and she said, Sahar, you know why this happened to us? Because Allah knows that, you know, we can handle this. Um, and then I think it was a couple of days and we just swung right back into action. I remember Sahar, she was right with us. She had lost her home, but she was raising funds, uh, you know, collecting re relief supplies. Ikna Relief was at our masjid within hours. Um, so, you know, and we built relationships that still exist to this day. Um, and when our mosque burnt down, a lot of those people who helped us then came around and said, since you guys were there for our communities, you need to sit back and let us help you with things now. In fact, um, one of the ladies, Susama Seeley, the director of um, disaster relief at Catholic Charities, were Facebook friends and uh, within hours of our masjid burning, she had posted it on her Facebook and two of her seniors knew and within two hours before it hitting the national headlines, it, President Obama knew. And he dispatched um, Reverend Myers, who's part of the faith-based initiative at the Department of Homeland Security, to come and visit with our Imam. And he was here the next day meeting with our congregation. So, you know, just so many things fell into place. You know, it, like I said, everything came full circle. We had many reasons to meet at the mosque, uh, to learn Arabic and read the Quran for Sunday school, for potluck dinners. Sometimes the girls and I would go um, just so that they could play with other children. And uh, we are missing that, but we're hopeful that inshallah in the future we will have it back again soon. Play with my friends. I like learning there and playing. Did. Me too. I'm Katie Moore, and um, this, this is the I Will board, and this board is just all about showing people love and just what you will do to show love. And um, there are things on here just like that you will serve and that you will love unconditionally and you will abide. And my favorite is that you will invite my neighbors over for dinner because um, I went to the mosque and I had dinner there and it was fantastic. And so I just love that we can share in community and just show love because God is about love and Joplin is about love. And I love how we can come together after a terrible tragedy and just still live in community and love each other no matter our differences and just love each other. As far as what the Muslim community could do to educate your neighbor, I would say getting involved in the interfaith community. So that would mean getting to know Christians, getting to know Jews, people of different faiths, and then coming alongside of them. It's very, very important that we begin breaking down walls and then building bridges with people. Um, there's a lot of ignorance, there's a lot of fear, um, a lot of stereotyping happening, and it's very, very important that we show the world that these are the who the stories are, these are the faces of the stories, um, getting to know the people by their name. That are the things that, those are the things we need to start doing right now. Um, 
I couldn't say any more about just needing to know people's stories and begin building relationships with them regardless of what they believe. It's so important that we do that because then it really begins to break down stereotypes. There is an ancient story that comes from India, the land where I trace my ethnic origins to, of a local king who refused to let a traveling group of Muslim migrants settle in his land. He did this by offering the Muslim congregation leader a glass of milk, which was full to the brim. This glass of milk was symbolic, as if to say, we are all full and there is simply no space for you. The Muslim congregation leader asked for a spoon of sugar and gently mixed it into the milk and stirred it in. He then said something very symbolic in return. He said, we as Muslims are like this sugar, quietly dissolving in your fabric without disrupting and only adding a sweetness to what was there before. This is what Muslims strive to be like in America. This is what we as a congregation strive to be like in Joplin. The sugar in your milk quietly dissolving and mixing in without disrupting anything, but hoping to leave a lasting taste of sweetness in the greater fabric of this great nation. I'd like to end with a verse from our Quran about humanity. It's from chapter 30, verse 22, and it says, And among his signs is the creation of the skies and the heavens and the earth, and the variations in your languages and your colors, Verily, in that are signs for those who know. God bless you all, and God bless Joplin. I wanted to say thank you from our congregation to each and every one of you over here today. We're so thankful, and thank you for doing this for our kids. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Assalamu alaikum and peace be on you.